This is what the future ought to look like. This video shows you the reasoning and the results of some new thinking, that is the modular city. Existing urbanization needs to be overhauled. The challenge of the 21st century is how to better urbanize and how to restart the stagnating global economy. This means rethinking how humans should live on planet Earth. Many people think that this is progress. The light is good, but the spread is bad. The spread of the current urbanization model is bad because it is driven by greed of the rich, the insecurity of the middle class, and the desperation of the rural poor who flood to the cities to find work. And so, like a cancer, it has metastasized all over the world, threatening farmlands, creating urban slums and urban sprawl, aided by city administrations in the toe of financial elites with impotent planners struggling to stem the tide of urban degradation. We not only need new planning, we need new economic thinking as well. It's not about capitalism in the 21st century. It's the way we've changed the rules of the game to disadvantage ordinary people. By policy and by design, existing urban exploitation, pollution and congestion can be solved. People should be above and vehicles should be below. People are the priority after all. There has to be a better way, not well-intentioned piecemeal gestures. This is what the 21st century should look like. Poverty and environmental justice can be addressed through new urbanization in rural areas and in the fringes of megacities. Big cities will then thin out and be repaired after people have moved out. Viable choice is offered to people living in existing small towns and villages to redevelop or move to new modular cities. There are many possibilities in the dynamics of such change. The important thing is availability of viable choice. Modularity offers systematic and sustainable deployability. This is the existing situation. Small villages far away from the mega city. Poor people begin to move to the cities seeking income to send home. They reside in the cheapest accommodation they can find, slums. More people follow, the slums get much bigger. The cause is the failure of the countryside. There is no solution to slums, but for poor families to move to new modular cities as they are built, where a better life is offered. As more modular cities develop, more slum people move out, thinning out the urban slums. E-commerce and high-tech organic farming changes everything. Finally, an eco-region is established and the megacity itself begins urban restoration. Carbon sequestration in topsoil quells climate change. The World Bank statistics shows that there is 49 million square kilometers of cropland and pastures on which the world depends for food. It is therefore crucial to preserve this resource and to raise crop yields. It is indeed a shocking realization that theoretically, 40,000 modular cities of one square kilometer each together will only make up 40,000 square kilometers of land or 200 kilometers by 200 kilometers. That's the size of that little red square in that expanse of agricultural green. And that is only for 4 billion population. Even if we triple this to 12 billion, it only requires three little red squares, which of course, when distributed in urban clusters and as standalone rural district towns, can hardly even be seen on that green square. By remobilizing the world's huge untapped wealth, reported by economist Thomas Piketty, investments in the multi-trillion range can change the world and restart the global economy. In the long run, uh, there is a tendency for the rate of return of capital to exceed uh, the economy's growth rate, and this tends to lead to high concentration of wealth. This concentration of wealth needs to be recycled into building new human infrastructure. The modular city is just what is needed. Welcome to Cosmopolis, 
a modular city of the 21st century where the humanized and the mechanized economies can coexist. The purpose of this city and its economy is to enhance human life. And as you shall see, this is what progress should really mean. We call this the modular city because it is compact, only one kilometer square with 100,000 population each, and which can be deployed singly or in clusters anywhere appropriate. The modular city provides all the floor space requirements required of an advanced economy. This means the full range of homes, shops, factories, hotels, offices, schools, everything that a well-functioning society needs, which is 50 square meters per person. Singapore has that, and so does Fairfax County of Washington, D.C. This is the basis of the concept of the modular city. This is the mathematical basis of new town planning that determines the density and form of a human settlement. It is a form that encourages the rebalancing of the mechanized with the humanized economies within the modular city concept. This provides fulfilling self-employment while robotic factories take away the drudgery of factory jobs. This is how cooperatives like that in Mondragon in northern Spain can be comprehensively successful too, owning their own bank, university and health system. So we test the idea of modular cities on a hypothetical island the size and shape of Singapore to see the effect of accommodating 7 million people. The first test was to ring the entire island with 70 modular cities accommodating the 7 million people, linked together with a highway. The central forested catchment area increased tremendously, as you can see. In another test, we clustered the modular cities such as an aeropolis near the airport, an edupolis near the university, a cosmopolitan in the downtown area, a medical police up in the north, etc. In this test, the amount of farmland increased tremendously accompanied by huge forests and many natural reservoirs. We invite Singapore's international partners to join with Singapore to build the first modular city for the 21st century, to leverage off Singapore's success by showcasing it here. By building the first modular city and demonstrating all the self-sustaining technologies it utilizes, together with a new economic model that demonstrates the viability of an enhanced human and machine economy, this demonstration project will stimulate the deployment of modular cities all over the world. Bear in mind that even though there is thematic specialization, all the modular cities have the full complement of homes, schools, medical facilities, small workshops built around a central nervous system. The key design of a modular city is the central nervous system, in which as people go about the routines of their everyday life, going to school, shopping, doing business, enjoying civic and cultural events, they get to meet new people and new ideas. This way, they gain intelligence and knowledge effortlessly. The quality and quantity of floor space of a modular city is derived from the organic form and density of old cities which have wonderful ambience, the squares, the meandering streets, and the lively civic urban life. This is Lisbon, this is Florence, this is Havana, Athens, Kaohsiung, Venice, Macau, and Barcelona. Since we elevate the entire city above the services and vehicles below, the entire city is traffic-free for pedestrians and bicycles. We modify these by inserting the central nervous system and derive the building envelopes that define the character of the town. Let's take a stroll through the central nervous system of Cosmopolis. Hi, welcome to my version of Florence. As we stroll through the central nervous system, we come across interesting buildings and lots of people. We see lots of trees and many different architectural styles. Overhead, we see the photovoltaic panels that also provide shade. In the distance, 
we see the tropicalized wind turbines that provide electricity. Here is an architect's office, cafe and art gallery. If you are prepared to give up your best, we'll reach out for the stars. Now, we ascend the steps of an adventure and physical education center. We look down into the campus square, a hub of student and public life. Here is a design school, and next to this is a media museum. Opposite this is an urban high-tech farm and salad bar. All these contribute to the liveliness of the modular city. Here is a public performing stage. Here is a kindergarten. As we move on, we see a visitor center built of wood. We now enter a different part of the city. Welcome to my version of Havana. Havana has a different ambience. Each section of the modular city has a different ambience and a different feel, and that is intentional. We now come to the physiotherapy and medical school, incorporating handcrafted elements that are produced by craftsmen who are part of the humanized economy. New architecture gives scope for craftsmen in the new hybrid economy. Now we take a walk around the edge of the city and to see the surrounding farms and kampongs. Notice the kampong huts that are dotted about the farms. The modular city concept can incorporate existing villages which also offer homestays to modular city dwellers who may want a change of scene occasionally. This is how a modular city grows. It starts off with a site layout with the basic roads. A perimeter water storage and treatment reservoir is built first. Then a deck is built in the center of the modular city to accommodate the factories, stores and offices. These are flatted factories initially, which in time will be increasingly automated and become more enclosed. Low-cost homes are built around the factory areas with shops and other social amenities. People buy their own homes from a regular sum deducted from their salaries governed by an employment charter. The central nervous system gathers momentum as more schools, health facilities and self-employment gather speed as automation, displaced labour embark on new enterprises with skills gained in nearby technical schools located in the central nervous system, near to where the workers live. The expansion outwards continues on new decks with services added underneath. Finally, middle-class homes form the outermost ring. Everyone lives within a 150-meter walking distance to jobs, to schools, and to urban facilities. The 100,000 population offers a rich enough variety of human types that can support a wide range of urban amenities and entertainment requirements. This is Paul Romer, Professor of Economics, who articulated the concept of charter cities in which an alignment of all the main stakeholders of a city are enshrined in a charter that offers benefits to everyone. So the proposal is that we conceive of something called a charter city. We start with a charter that specifies all the rules required to attract the people who will need to build the city. This idea suits the modular city concept very well. It could evolve direct democracy through the impact of integrated life and learning. If this is provided by a central nervous system of the city, but if not, the city could eventually lead to the dominance of the owners of the economy. So this is the dynamics that is built in. Autonomy within a market economy based on shared interests is key to the 21st century future. 
This relative autonomy that underpins the democracy requires energy, food, water, and waste recycling technologies that can be off-grid. Here is a tropical low wind speed turbine designed by Singapore's serial inventor that can be installed in cities because it is quiet and inexpensive. This is Donald Saddleways from MIT, low cost, high storage density liquid metal battery, which is needed to even out the intermittent supply and demand cycles. With a giant battery, we'd be able to address the problem of intermittency that prevents wind and solar from contributing to the grid in the same way that coal and gas and nuclear do today. So here you have it, grid-level storage, silent, emissions-free, no moving parts, remotely controlled, designed to the market price point. The Chinese and the Indians are actively developing thorium nuclear plants that promise to obsolete dangerous uranium-based plants. A thorium nuclear plant was developed in Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the United States in the 1960s. The second reactor actually operated very well. That was the molten salt reactor experiment. But was displaced by uranium in 1972 in answer to military priority for weapons-grade fissile material instead. With autonomous energy, water and food nearby, modular cities can be deployed anywhere. Through a rebalanced economy, the mechanized together with the humanized economies will unlock total aggregate demand and thus trigger a new and just world. This has to be our collective future. Thank you for watching this video and we hope that the first modular city will be realized in Singapore in the near future. These are the students who contributed greatly to this year-long design research project. And this is the team that made the video through a grant from the NUS School of Design and Environment, Department of Architecture.